Hi, I'm Dr. Yen Reyes. I'm an infectious disease specialist and a pediatrician. I will be talking about medical updates, lifestyle, and health. So please subscribe to my channel and click the notification button. Hi, I'm Dr. Yen Reyes. I'm a pediatric infectious disease specialist. A lot of mothers are calling me to ask if safe ba daw talaga na papabakunahan ang mga precious kids nila 5 to 11 years old. Meron na kasing rollout sa Philippines by February 4 perhaps na magkakaroon na ng vaccination for 5 to 11 years old. So bago natin ma-decide ma for that, we, all, always, we will always check for the number one, safety. Uh, immunogenicity and efficacy. So we have to know what are the benefits over the risk. So ano yung mga direct benefits ng COVID vaccination? So number one, it can, it can reduce the chance for severity. So pwedeng hindi siya magkakaroon ng severe illness or reduce the chance for hospitalization secondary to COVID. Or it can also, in some instances, prevent COVID infection itself. Yun yung mga direct benefits. So, ano yung mga indirect benefits? So, it will also reduce the anxiety of the parents. Especially pag may COVID yung bata, uh, grabe ang anxiety, grabe ang tension ng mga mommies kung may COVID yung bata. Yung parang gusto sabi nila eh, sana ako na lang, huwag na lang yung bata. Kasi sobrang anxiety ng parents kung may COVID yung mga bata. So vaccination can also prevent COVID itself and also reduce the anxiety of parents and caregivers. It can also reduce the chance for you to have COVID itself because you can have a cocoon. And also it can also reduce the transmission from the kids to the vulnerable populations like their grandparents, their lolos and their lolas because if kids will have COVID, they can usually transmit this COVID to their grandparents and to their parents and to their loved ones. It is also a good chance for preparation for face-to-face -face or in-person during school. And in the long run, it can also have cost-effective benefits because if the patient is, the patient will have COVID and because the patient is not vaccinated, the mother will not go to work and that will also reduce their their chances for for economics for economics reason next we also have to discuss the safety so it is it safe so there are already a lot of publications and there are already a lot of studies in the new england journal of medicines they have a lot of journals there where they checked per journal around 2000 kids 2600 kids and per per test and they were noted to to be very very safe so it is already given to a lot of kids 5 to 11 years old in us in uk and some countries in europe and even in some countries of asia and they they noted that it is safe although it is not 100 percent safe because there could be other rare complications so we, after checking the benefits and safety you have to check the immunogenicity. So studies have also shown that it is immunogenic. So to check for immunogenicity, they test the neutralize, neutralization antibodies and the geometric mean titer of those vaccines. And they noted that uh, after giving the vaccines, the neutralizing antibodies and the geometric mean titers are already very, very high. So that means the, the vaccines are immunogenic even to kids. Uh, six or five to eleven years old. So to test for that, they were they they had these intensive trials wherein they are they did the phase one, the preclinical trials, the, the phase two, the dosage trial, wherein they were able to check if it is ten micrograms, twenty micrograms, and thirty micrograms until they finally published that around ten micrograms is enough for kids to to be immunogenic. So the, it has already passed a very tedious process and it is already approved by the World Health Organization and then eventually approved by the Philippine Food and Drug and approved by our Department of Health and those who are IATF and all those persons are 
organizations which takes care if the vaccine is safe to be given to us. So after that, we have to check what were the side effects during those studies. So in those studies and in those publications, they noted that in 2% of the population, there were uh, pain on the injection site. It is the usual side effect. Others have redness. Others have swelling, yung namamaga yung kanilang arms. And then uh, others have uh, muscle pains, yung sumasakit yung arms nila, yung iba joint pains. Ang iba may fever, ang iba may headache, yung iba merong vomiting, ang iba naman may diarrhea. So regularly, pag nagpe-fever naman yung bata, uh, nag-ano lang sila, nagbibigay lang ng paracetamol and if there are rashes or other allergic reactions, nagbibigay din sila ng antihistamine. Pero you are not allowed to give paracetamol or antihistamine prior to prior to the vaccination. You only have to give if the patient has fever or fever or rashes or any other symptoms. So it is really symptomatic. So it occurs in 2% of cases. So rarely may mga ibang cases na merong mga myocarditis na reported. So they said it's uh, WHO reported that in 40 males out of 1 million males usually occurs in the adolescent age group, 12 to 16 years old. Merns lang myocarditis, so you just have to be very, very careful kung merong chest pain, palpitations, or shortness of breath. So yun, kailangan makita ng, makita ng doctor agad. Dalhin niyo siya agad sa doctor. Pero uh, the, those side effects were very, very rare, and we should have to consider more the benefits over the risk. Next, ano na naman yung preparation natin? So first, dapat may psychological preparation. So dapat i-groom ninyo yung bata in such a way na hindi sila matatakot. So pag-usapan nyo na uh, pupunta tayo sa uh, vaccination site by February 4 or February 5. And then, uh, ang vaccine ay tutusok sa'yo. Masakit sandali, pero uh, very important siya. Like for example, Kukwento niyo kung ano yung process ng vaccination, which, which is the usual na ginagawa ng mga parents bago nagpapa-vaccinate yung mga kids. Like for example, pakita nila yung picture ng chicken pox. So itong bata na to, may chicken pox. Di, marami siyang glutong, marami siyang rashes. Pero itong bata na to, hindi talaga siya nagkaroon ng chicken pox kasi nagpabakuna siya. So in the same way, kukwento niyo na para hindi ka rin magkakaroon ng COVID tulad ng lola nyo na like for example yung ibang kids uh, their loved ones like for example their lolo uh, namatay secondary to COVID na intindihan na nila yon eh alam na alam na nila na COVID so para hindi ka magaya ng lolo mo na namatay dahil sa COVID so it's best na babakunahan ka or para hindi ka ma-hospitalize so dapat maintindihan nila yung importance ng vaccination kasi yung Pagbabakuna kasi, yun yung tinatawag na antigen, itutusok yun sa body mo. Tapos yung body mo, magpo-form siya ng soldiers against that antigen. So pag may soldiers ka na, uh, yun, pag dumating na yung sakit na yon nandun na yung soldiers mo, sila na yung atak. So importante na magpabakuna ka para magbibuild ka ng soldiers para sa body mo, para po sakali magkaroon ng ma-encounter ma mo yung sakit na yon meron may soldiers ka na sa body mo. So yun yung importance of vaccination. So you have to groom them in such a way na dapat yung vaccination should not be a very unpleasant for them. So it should it should supposed to be a, a happy memory for them. So other than that, you have to prepare them. Like for example, you have to give them a nice face mask like or a nice face shield. So some of my patients, they are so proud to show to me that Doktor, ang ganda-ganda ng face mask ko, di ba? Ang ganda ng face shield ko, di ba? May princess yan. O kaya Spider-Man yan. So, they are so happy and they are so proud showing to their doctors that they have nice face mask and face shield. So, aside from that, you also have to dress them lightly. So, in other in other parents, like for example, mga regular immunization schedule, since they said na para magiging happy para sa mga kids, may mga, may mga new shoes. Kasi nga, minsan, pandemic, uh, almost two years na yung pandemic, so nag-iiba na yung size ng mga fit na mga bata, so binibili ng new shoes. So as much as possible, kung sakali mong bibili kayo, mas maganda yung clothes na shoes, or sneakers, or rubber shoes. And then by then, very very proud din yung bata na happy, happy memory din nila na habang nagpabakuna sila, bago yung shoes nila. Pero hindi naman necessary na kailangan bago, kung sakali lang kailangan, kasi nga, 
Kulanas lang ka siya dahil pandemic. So, it is best na uh, during that time na sila ibibili. Kasi nga, aalis din sila. So, aside from grooming them, you should also prepare the necessary requirements. So, number one, yung certificate affiliation. Kasi yung ibang mga patients, yung ibang mga mothers, yung 12 to 16, nakalimutan nila yung birth certificate ng bata. So, uuwi pa sila. So, you also have to prepare that. Yung birth certificate ng bata, dapat nandyan. O kaya, marriage certificate para makita na ikaw talaga yung nanay or, or ID mo na or ID mo na ikaw yung ikaw yung caretaker ng bata or or kailangan din ng certificate of vaccination mo. So, may mga instances din na kailangan pa ng medical certificate. So, aside po, pa mga bata na mga immunocompromised, kailangan ng mga medical certificate. So, ito yung mga instances na kailangan aside from the certificate of affiliation, yung uh, birth certificate, kailangan mo ng medical certificate. Ito mga following individuals na immunocompromised na tinatawag. So, those with uh, medical complications, like yung mga nakatrachiostomy, so kailangan din sila mag-COVID vaccine, so kailangan nyo ng medical certificate or medical clearance from your doctor. Those with neurologic problems, like for example, may stroke, na stroke na sila, or yung may mga cerebral palsy, kailangan ng medical certificate. Those with cardiac problems, or uh, congenital heart disease, yung CHD, uh, VSD, ASD, yung mga may lung diseases like bronchial asthma or yung tuberculosis na full-blown or any other tuberculosis with complications, kailangan ng medical certificate. And also kung may liver problem like jaundice or liver, liver, liver damage, kailangan din ng medical certificate. Yung kidney problems like lupus erythematosus or or on any other kidney diseases. Yung may HIV, siyempre may mga kids na rin na may HIV, kailangan ng medical certificate and medical clearance. Yung obese na more than 95%, kailangan din nila ng certificate. And then usually, yung any other metabolic problems like diabetes or even hyperthyroidism, it's best na may clearance kayo sa pediatrician nyo na, na pwede yung bata mabakunahan. So ano-ano yung mga contraindications. So yung contraindications lang ng pag-vaccinate is yung tinatawag na a previous reaction to a to a vaccine. So since first time naman nila hindi niyo pa malalaman or yung marriage lang allergic reaction sa polyethylene glycol. Kasi yung polyethylene glycol kasama siya sa paggawa ng vaccine. So yung polyethylene glycol ginagawa siya sa radiologic uh, procedures like Ay, pag ipapacheck niyo yung bituka niya, may polyethylene glycol na ginagamit doon. Pag nag-allergy siya doon, uh, as, as much as possible, uh, isa yan sa mga contraindication. But you really have to check with your doctors first. So other contraindications is acute febrile illness during that time. So kung sakaling may, may lagnat yung bata during that time, so as much as possible, wag na muna. Kasi pwede kasi siyang magkaka-fever during the immunization. So wag na muna siyang magpapa vaccine kung sakali siyang, kung sakali meron siyang mga acute febrile illnesses. So, ano pa yung others na ipaprepare nyo? So, ipaprepare nyo pa yung things sa bata. So, uh, yung may face mask, face shield, yung alcohol niya, yung wipes. So, extra t-shirt. Uh, importante na may extra t-shirt yung bata kasi syempre mabilis lang pawisan. Tapos, it's also important na yung clothes nila, light clothes lang kasi pag sobrang init, naka-sweater na sila. Tapos, minsan kasi so vaccination site, may mga phases eh. Yung first phase, registration. Second, physical exam. Third phase, vaccination. So, transfer sila ng transfer. Pag sobrang init naman yung suot nila, so papawisan sila. Pwede din, so, ma pwede din pang maano ng fever kung sobrang mainit. So, it's best na yung light clothes lang. Tapos magdala kayo ng extra t-shirt. So, you should also bring the face mask, face shield, alcohol, and then extra water para sa kids at saka food. Kasi yung kids, ma, ano eh, kumaka, kumakain sila minsan at saka mabilis lang magutom. Dapat may food. And aside from that, dahil nga sinabi kong may faces yung vaccination, dapat meron kayong dala na to entertain the kids. Magdala kayo ng mga uh, toys nila o kaya kung mahilig sila sa crossword puzzles, magdala kayo or any gadgets na games na pwede nilang laruin para, ano, para hindi sila mainit. So, during the vaccination itself, uh, ano yung dapat yung gawin? You have to tell the kids na as much as possible, dikit ka lang sa mami mo o kaya sa lola mo. 
Pero yung ano, as much as possible pala, bawal yung 60 and above na companion ng bata. So, it is best na 60 and below yung companion nila. Kasi syempre, ma ma mataas din yung risk pag 60 and above, pag senior. Kasi nga, uh, mas considered din silang immunocompromised. So, dapat yung companion ng bata, kung sakaling grandmother man, dapat 60 and below. So, dapat kung during the vaccination itself, dapat nakadikit lang sila kasi may chair naman yon So, bawal sila mag roam around at saka you encourage them na bawal sila mag-touch anything, okay? So, kahit ikaw na ano, may registration, magdala ka rin ng sarili mong ball pen. So, uh, so before the vaccination, ito yung dalhin mo. Uh, certificate affiliation, your vaccination card. So, optional your marriage certificate. Uh, medical certificate sa mga instances na kailangan. Tapos yung gamit ng mga bata. Like for example, yung face mask, face shield, alcohol, wipes, extra t-shirt, gadgets, uh, food, and water. So during the vaccination, uh, wag nang siya mag roam around. Tapos after the vaccination, you have to wait for 15 to 30 minutes. Depende sa classification ng bata. Kung, kung gano'n siya katagal maghintay. So check kung may uh, reaction siya. So, at home, uh, kung sakaling magka-fever, you give paracetamol. And kung sakaling mag, uh, mangangati siya or any other symptoms, so you can give antihistamine or you can call your doctor. So, when you reach home, it is best na paliguan yung kids. Change na sila ng clothing nila. Tapos, give them the proper food. So, dapat yung food na gusto nila sa, as, a, as a reward kasi brave sila. Tapos, uh, let them sleep and let them rest. So, wag muna yung mga sobrang strenuous activities kasi you have to you have to check them and watch out for symptoms, especially during the 24 hours. So, kung sakaling meron silang chest pain, sumasakit yung heart nila, uh, nahirapan silang huminga or seizure or any other symptoms, you have to go to the emergency room or call your pediatrician immediately. So it is noted that widespread vaccination across all age group is important to curtail the pandemic. So I really hope that you will, uh, we, all, we all have a, a role to play. We have to vaccinate our, ourselves, we have to vaccinate our children whenever it is possible because we all have a role to play to stop this pandemic. So to all the kids, so kita kids tayo sa vaccination site. So I really hope that you you will bring your kids for vaccination so that the, the pandemic will stop. Stay safe, everyone.